Welcome to my workshop. Let's discover what tools teach us about life. Take a look at this happy little tool. This is the Flip Grip Multi-Tool. It has some great features. It has two sets of plier heads on it. It has a little bit holder and it has multi-tool pieces here. So let's take a look first. Um, when you get it, it has this little lock here for the pliers, okay? And you have two plier options. This is the first beefy little boy here. Um, and this is kind of like a lineman style plier, so it doesn't touch fully. And that's so that you can get really good purchase on thicker wires. You can see if I get like real close inside of here, um, they have really good serrations and everything like that for bolts and everything like that. You can really grab a hold of something. So for example, here's a bolt and you can see I have pretty good purchase of that. But the problem is like, look how far away those handles are from each other. You can grab onto things, but you can't really, like I have a big hand and it's hard to, like if I'm grabbing the bolt around right here, you can see like my hands keep sliding up. It, it, it's not very practical. And then the other side of the pliers aren't too bad because they're needle nose pliers and you're probably gonna be using them with your hands closer together. So again, the serrations inside, uh, the serrations, the grip, I guess, is pretty strong. And on top of that, right here, you have your wire cutters and then you have some crimpers. So if you look at how the pliers are, okay, when you grab them, they have a spring-like action to want to do that. So anything that requires repeated grabbing and pulling kind of motions, every time, if you accidentally miss it, like if you accidentally let go of the handle, um, because maybe you're working in a tight spot, you know, I'm trying to, you know, if I'm grabbing this, right, I can grab this no problem. And again, look how far my hands are apart, but let's not get lost in that. Um, so, if my finger slips, I can't, like, I, I'm, I'm exaggerating right now, but, you know, when you're working hard, you don't want to have to uh, struggle to grab the other handle if it slips out of your hands. And this, I mean, is just crazy. So, that's the pliers. Uh, they're largely impractical, and they don't do the job of a plier very well, despite the fact that there's two of them. Some people might argue with me and that's fine. Uh, but, you know, I've tried using these on a job and I've found that they can largely do that. Um, if you're not careful, you know, especially if you're trying to pry and pull. Um, here, here's the banana. <laughs> we'll pry and pull the banana. So, you know, I'm pulling and it's very easy because of how at their natural position they're so far away. It's, it's actually, you have to like really choke all the way up on them to be able to grab what you're trying to grab um, with any kind of real precision and strength. The second you are um, coming down here, you lose first of all a lot of the strength and I would say you lose a lot of um, opening uh, at the at the end, like this is, you know, um, kind of what I'm working with here. So I'm trying to grab this, which is fine. It's just a silly, you know, banana, which banana for scale. <laughs> Let's get that all in frame. So that's a banana for scale. Um, anyways, so if I'm trying to grab something, uh, you know, stay there, banana. If, I, if I'm trying to grab something here, but the reality I was finding when I was reaching in tight places with this and trying to pull things out, because I was operating near the end here to try to get deep in, uh, I kept slipping and then, and then this guy would shoot out. And then I would have to reorientate it and try to get in there. I'm certain if you're trying to use something and you know, you're just, you know, using it to hold something, kind of to work on it with your other hand, that would work just fine, 
right? So let's say I'm trying to manipulate something here. You know, that's, that's fine. I can do that no problem. But generally speaking, the spring on this thing is so strong that like you're really fighting it to keep it closed. Let's move along to another cool feature of this. And that is the fact that there is a quarter inch bit holder in here. And they actually, oh, it's really strong actually. I find often I need something to help open this. Um, we have four bits inside. This can fit four one inch bits or two two foot bit, uh, two foot, two inch bits. And it's just held in with a magnet right up there. And of course, you know, you can, it's no problem actually using this even at the long end. It's a little wobbly that way, but the reality is because this lock keeps those plier heads closed and, and it's all one single line like that, it's, it feels like an inline screwdriver that you don't get in many other multi-tools. And I like this, you know, you can really, I can really choke up and it's pretty easy to use actually. I think that's probably the best feature on it is the bit holder. Now the magnet isn't very strong. Like, so let's put them away here. You see that they kind of stack pretty easily in there. Um, and it's just a friction tightening here. Now we can move to the last bit here. And we have one, two, three, four, five tools in here. And uh, we'll start. Now all of these tools but one are locking. So first of all, we have this kind of combination tool. You see it as a serration, um, a serration, wow, a file. And it's great for your nails, it works great for my nails, but I wouldn't use it for anything else. Uh, it has a ruler here, uh, literally it looks like it's one and a half inches, and we can see how actually accurate that is, um, according to my mat, accurate. Okay, and uh, you have a serrated blade, which I'm running my thumb across here, and it doesn't really show any marks on it, and then finally you have this flathead screwdriver uh, which, I mean, fair enough. It will work as a flathead screwdriver. Um, now, this tool is locked. To unlock the tool, you'll see that there's one hump there and you push that in, and now you can make a satisfying click when you, when you close it. The next tool in line is the knife. That's a very small knife, you know, it's one and a half inches long. Uh, well, almost two inches, but the, the, the blade material is about one and a half uh, inches. Um, you know, the, the reality is it's a small blade and it's not gonna do too much for you, but you know, opening packages or, I don't know, I guess you could uh, slice an apple with this, but it's a very tiny blade, kind of unpractical. But again, locking, pushing this down unlocks allows you to close it. The middle tool, which is also the unlocking tool, is the only tool that doesn't lock. And that is the saw. Now, this does sort of saw, you can see here. Now, that being said, you have, again, you have what? You have about one and a half inch of saw blade, okay? So, if you look in here, it did go through there surprisingly well, um, but because it's, it's, it's really not that strong of a saw, like, I'm rubbing my finger against it really hard, and... I only have like sawdust on there from using it just now on this. Um, but I mean, I guess it's for a very small task, it's nice. You know, this uh, two by one wood, it's gonna, it would take 
a long time, but I could probably, I could probably, oh God, let's see here. Yeah, yeah, so it would take a very long time, but I could saw through it, I guess. So yeah, here's another tool that unfortunately um, isn't very good. Our next tool, uh, working our way around here, is this locking combination wrench, uh, multi-wrench. These never work right, they're always sort of junk. Um, and then a bottle cap opener. So I guess for the bottle cap uh, situation it would work great. Um, again, we just push this in and we can unlock that. And our last tool, I actually sort of like this form of, uh, I guess it's an awl you would call it. Um, I like these versions of an awl. I, I, I like a strong pokey thing. Uh, you know, I can't really describe why I use these tools, but I find often like if I need to dig something open, you know, this isn't probably, uh, so actually I just I just undid the, the lock here and I tried to do it back up, but you have to really get it on there. So I like this all for kind of poking or jabbing at things, but for drilling a hole, it's impractical. Like I can do it, but it's not really going deep at all. So, um, and again, it's locking, so that's that's great if it was better at drilling holes. Um, but I guess for a specific pick type usage, um, it would be all right. Now, I try not to be too negative in my life. You know, I'm I'm working on that, of course. But it's it's hard to find something about this that I like as a tool. Um, and what I've come to conclude here is this tool is a collector's item, okay? I wouldn't ever actually use this tool, but as an item in my collection, it's really nice, you know? and. It's not meant to be used and that's okay. Because sometimes it's just good to exist. And uh, that's okay. Because you know what, it looks cool. It's fun to play with. You know, the, that whole thing is fun. That's a horn. Let me move this guy out of the way. Let's do this a little bit. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, it's impractical. Should you buy it if you're not a collector and you actually want to use it? Probably not. You have to buy them used on eBay. Um, there's similar tools out there that have that that dual plier thing. But you know what? It's nice that it exists and it's nice that you exist. Anyway, thanks for coming to my workshop.